Good morning, comrades. Can can you hear me? Yes, comrade. Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, comrade. We can hear you. All right. We can hear you. Okay. No. Th hear no. Thank you. Thank. Thank you very much. Welcome to the forty seventh anniversary commemoration of our martyr, our comrade, our leader. Comrade Ongopote Abraham Ramu Tibitiro. Um, this is a significant calendar, I mean, significant date in the calendar of our movement because Comrade Tiro, as we all know, was probably the second high ranking leader of our movement to be assassinated by the apartheid regime. This is coming almost uh, two years after Comrade Mtulika Shezi was, was murdered in a very gruesome manner. I mean, in a very gruesome manner at uh, Jamiston Station when he was pushed in front of a moving train. So this date, yeah, Comrade Tiro is, 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 is important to observe by members of the movement, uh, adherents, and, and those who, who support his, his ideas and his ideals. I am particularly pleased that we are joined by one of the Tiro family members, Comrade Khaung Alelwe Tiro. Uh, I hope you can hear us. Why don't you say hello to, to the participants here, Comrade? I mention him in particular because um, he's, he's done a, a great service to the legacy of uh, his uncle and his relation because uh, two years ago, if I'm not mistaken, he published um, a, a full biography on Tiro, his family life, his personality, his background and all of that. So I would urge most of us who are logging in here who really want to have a glimpse into who Tiro the man was to get hold of uh, that book, Parcel of Dead. Numela Ndate, how are you? Hello, hello to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Rale Boha. We, Rale Boha Rona, hopefully um, as, as we, we roll out this month, we might probably call on you also to share your insights and ideas about uh, who your your uncle um, and your the man who, be, who who bears the same family name as you was because you probably have much more deeper insights than those of us who just know of him as as an icon and somebody who contributed to the struggle. Um, the way we are going to unfold this program. Um, it has it has basically got two parts. Uh, we we had hoped to start early in the morning with or at this time with the the wreath laying in in the Nogana. Our comrades are there on the ground, but it looks like they are struggling with the network. I have been in communication with them about thirty minutes before we kicked off, but they are pulling all stops on the ground to make sure that we at least get some feed. They said they will let me know as soon as they've been able to, to work out the technicalities around that. As we know, Dinogana is a rural area. Uh, when we design the program, we're hopeful that it's not as bad as we think it is. But as they say, the, the taste of the pudding is in the eating. So to their surprise, when they got there, they realized that the network is a bit too weak and then it keeps cutting. But there was a comrade who was trying, who was going to try and organize either a Wi-Fi or a fiber to, to, to connect and to give us feed. But, that, but be that as it may, it does not deter us uh, to affirm that Tiro was one of our great martyrs. Um, he contributed a lot to the building of resistance in this country at a time when um, um, you know our people had basically lost all hope that the apartheid regime um, was going to be defeated. As we know at that time, Tiro, Biko, Mapetla Mohapi, Shezi, the Miezas came onto the scene when hope was receding in the struggle. 
Most of uh, the other political leaders were in prison and aging. Others were in exile. Um, and, you know, they were aging as well. But Tiro came onto the scene with that 1972 remarkable speech that he did, which presented wave after wave of mass resistance. So when we talk about the history of mass resistance in this country, we cannot talk about it without referencing, perhaps as a starting point, that 1972 uh, speech by Tiro, which as we know, led to his expulsion from the University of the North then. And because the stu students saw him as a victim of apartheid um, um, persecution um, after he was expelled, a, a number of the students refused to attend classes at the university. And it, did not, it was not only limited to the University of the North, but other colleges of education, technical colleges and other universities in this country then said, well, if Tiro is not going to come back to university, we are also not going to attend our classes. Those of us who grew up at that time who are young know that our uncles, our aunts, uh, neighbors and community members who were at technical colleges or theological colleges and all types of higher education institutions came back home and they spend a great deal of time saying that, well, there are class boycotts at the universities. And it is because of that history that many of their generation and our generation as well took a stance never to graduate at universities, um, particularly uh, under apartheid. So Tiro influenced the, the spirit of resistance in this country a great deal. Subsequent to 1972, we also saw uh, workers rising up. Uh, we, we link the, the confidence to resist and to um, take a stance against apartheid and confront the, the, that brutal regime at that time um, by, by linking this with the, the workers as well. In 1973, the Durban worker strike happened. And it was for the first time that workers had risen en masse in South Africa, particularly black workers. And that strike by workers in Durban in 1973 actually led to major changes in labor law, in granting black workers their rights and all of that. So all of these, this confidence to resist is traceable to what, to the events of 1972 at Teflop. And of course, then it led to the high point of June, 1976, when um, the students in Soweto um, started that resistance uh, against Africans, which fled up and um, spread to all corners of the country. And it was that resistance, that movement that led to throngs and throngs and multitudes of young people um, fleeing to exile and giving confidence once again um, to the movements in exile, uh, bringing young blood into the movement, particularly um, in their combat forces. So to a large extent, we owe our freedom, our liberation to the work that Tiro did, to the um, confidence that he built in young people and among black people and among workers to, to resist uh, apartheid. So it is appropriate that um, despite the challenges of COVID, uh, despite this being a working day, uh, those of you who have joined in um, have um, done a, an, the honorable thing of, uh, you know, respecting and observing uh, this important day by remembering that somebody once laid their lives so that we should be free. Um, um, the president will, I mean, after the wreath laying in the Nokwana, we're then going to proceed to the second part where the president was going to deliver um, a memorial message uh, in honor of, of, of Tiro. We had scheduled, um, we had scheduled the, the program to, 
to start um, around 12 o'clock, but uh, because we are now being disorganized um, by the live feed from Dinokana, um, just hold in a second, comrade, let me just sort out something on my, my timeline. Okay, yep. Yeah. If if we, we don't get the live feed from Dinokana, we will then have to ask the president to come earlier than scheduled. Um, but but let's see how, how the program uh, unfolds um, for the time being. Um, whilst we are waiting for the comrades at uh, Dinokana to, to resolve their technicalities, I wonder if I... I can use my discretion, seeing that you are here, Comrade Khaungalelui, perhaps just to afford you a brief opportunity, uh, even if it's about five to 10 minutes, to, to give us tidbits of you know, your research and uh, the narrative that you compiled about Tiro, perhaps things that we might not know um, as people who are not so intimately involved with uh, with his life, but who really relate to to him from a, a political perspective, uh, maybe to share with us what is contained there uh, in your book, uh, just to interest uh, comrades and other people who may be interested. Um, I hope I'm not pouncing on you, but uh, I'm just trying to, um, you know use up some time so that we can give these comrades an opportunity to give us a live feed on the uh at the retlaying if we don't get there then i will then have to ask the president to to come in earlier than scheduled do you mind my my brother my comrade Comrades, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Hey. Comrades, can I get some feedback? Uh, I'm worried that I'm not... Yeah, yeah we, we, we hear you, comrades. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay. We Please can, give, can hear you, comrades. give me some response because sometimes when you are all muted and I just ramble on all by myself, I, 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 I get the impression that I, I might be talking, but I might not be, uh, um, you know, going on live and you might not be hearing me. So, Nade Tiro, um, th that's my, 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 my request humbly to you. Uh, if you don't mind, perhaps we, we can give you this platform just to, to share with us um, your insights about the life of, of, of our Mataya and Hero. Okay, I'm not okay. Should I unmute you or what? Are you are you muted? Out of corner right. Hello. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Um. Yeah. The. The, the the line is actually quite quite. Uh, uh, is it know, is it my line, or, or yours? But um, in, in times I'm, I'm I'm unable to hear you. But I think uh, if 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 I if I heard you, uh, basically you you were just asking me to give um, you know like a, an an overview um, of of what uh, you know the the, the book uh, entails. Yes. Um, well, basically, what I've attempted to do with, with the book basically was to to to, to sort of narrate, uh, you know, a cradle to grave uh, kind of narrative um, about you know the life and times of uh, you know the late uh, and you know at, at the at the beginning uh, of, of 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 the book and how I I went about it. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, I, I started by, by, by looking at, uh, you know, the community that, that he came from, you know, the, the community of, 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 of Dinogana and, and that area in, in general. Okay. Uh, precisely because I wanted to, to try and, and understand him, you know, in, in totality. Mm-hmm. To, to understand what would have been, uh, you know, uh, for instance, his uh, formative uh, uh, influences. Um, and, and, you know, I, I go quite, um, I, I do, you know, I, I did quite a extensive research into part, that part of the narrative because I think to, to, to a very large extent, what would have made him susceptible, mm-hmm. you know, to the then germinating philosophy of black consciousness would have been, uh, you know the the the, the community and the, and and the backgrounds that that it came from. As you know, naturally okay. you would know, uh, Dinogana and 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 its surrounds yes. has you know quite an extensive uh, history hmm. of uh, involvement in the in in, in the liberation uh, struggle. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And 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 I think you know to a very large extent that that would have that would be what would have you know primed him for. Uh, in later activism um, in life, but you know, um, obviously, also the, the the philosophy of of black consciousness was quite a, a, an important influence that shaped his his political outlook. Yeah. Um, if if you look at him, uh, you know, when when he arrived at 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 Tefluo, um, he would have been. Uh, fully exposed, you know, to the total reality of, you know, um, the life of, of black people in, in, in the country. But black consciousness introduced him or provided him with, with, with a framework yes. to understand, you know, the total reality of the oppression of, of black people in, in, in the country. Mm. Um, yeah, I think you know. I I also looked, you know, at you know the kind of of, of personality yeah, that that we have. You know, I I wanted to look at at Uncopoti. Uh, can we ask uh, comrades to mute? Uh, we've got a, a speaker on the podium. Oh, okay. No. All right. No, you go on. You go on, Rehamali. Uh, Go on, go on, Comrade Khamalil. Did I mute you? Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, what do I do now? Just hold a sec for me. Ask to unmute. Hold on a sec. Okay, but you are unmuted. Are you there, Khan Alilui? Yeah, yes, I, I, I am. All right, thank you, thank you. All right. Okay, go on. Let me just... Um, let, yeah, no, so... so right. Okay, go on. Well, it's just that some participants have got their audio on, so I'll, I'll, I'll mute them, it's fine. Go on. Hello? Yes, Nale, go on, yeah. Oh, okay, no, no, oh, you, 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 you can hear me, oh, oh, all yes. right. Yes. Yeah, no, no, so, so, so basically, yes, like, like I was saying that, you know, one of the things also that I, I wanted to, to do with the book was to look at him in, in, in totality, you know, on composite, you know, the person. Okay. Uh, you know, that just on composite, you know, the the, the, the activist. And and to do that, you know, I I, I spent quite a lot of time um in, in Zirast in, in, in Dunagana uh, speaking to uh you know people that he would have uh, grown up uh, with and, and people that you know he would have uh, interacted with in, in one capacity or the other, just to get their re- recollections and reflections yes. on, on, on the kind of, of, of personality that um uh, uh, you know, uh, he was. Yeah. Um, 
And then, you know, the, the, the rest of the book, you know, speaks to, you know, the historical background as, 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 as well, you know, uh, from the formation of Sasso in 1968, okay. um, all the way up to, you know, um, the seminal speech that he, he, he delivered uh, in, in 1972. Yeah. Um, at, at, at the University of, of, of the North. And, you know, I, I, I tried to, to, to kind of like assess what would have been its, its impact because, you know, I think um, the, 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 the import of, of actually what, what happened with, with the terror affair is actually lost on a whole lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, because I think um, if, if, if you look at it, um, it was part of, of an integrated, you know, continuum that basically culminated in what subsequently happened, say, in, in, in June 1976. Um, uh, uh, okay, yeah. But then uh, beyond that, uh, another, you know, um, aspect that, that, that I looked at um, was, was around the issue of what could have possibly happened you know, with regard to, to his assassination, who would have been um, a, a, a responsible. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that was one, you know, area that was actually particularly tricky because I approached, um, you know, the, the authorities in, in, in South Africa uh, at the time that I was, uh, you know, writing the book uh, to try and get, you know, his security file mm -hmm. uh, and, and declassified. And, um, you know, they, they, they basically, you know, it gave us a, 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 a run around um, um, you know I the, the same thing happened with, with the authorities of Botswana who would have been you know, particularly useful because that's where you know the investigation into his death uh, uh, basically happened mm. um, well in time and that was you know after the book was, was already out um, uh, you know the, we eventually found um I mean, the, 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 the security file was eventually uh, declassified. Uh, unfortunately, as you know, most of the records have been destroyed. It was actually quite thin. Okay. Um, it was in two parts. I mean, there was one part that was, you know, from the, uh, the, the intelligence. Uh, I think that was a documentation that was deposited by, by, by boss. Um, there's nothing particularly um, explosive in, in, in what, uh, you know, that, that part of the the security was was saying, but I think nonetheless it was still you know quite useful information because it it corroborated some of the information that I'd come across. For instance, it, it speaks specifically to to um, the issue of of the banning order that indeed there was a, a, a banning order that that was on the way. Okay. Uh, you'd recall it was like three months just after the Sasso aid was banned, and uh, mm -hmm. I think they had intended uh, to. There was also, you know, another cohort of, of you know, BC um, um, Sasso leaders that uh, the securocrats had recommended that uh, be banned. And Nkobozo was amongst those, yeah. uh, together with Ntate Mangena and, and several other, uh, you know, um, comrades of, 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 of theirs. And yeah, that, that is the, the, the security part. Uh, and then the other part of the file was actually from 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 subs you know from 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 the police it's actually even thinner than than the the one from from the national intelligence it, it mm. basically also then also speaks about the issue of um of, of the banning order um, and 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 once again you know um it, it corroborates some of the information that i had not been able to to corroborate um um, it, it speaks specifically about uh, what they had planned uh, with regard to 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 to, to banishing him. Uh, it indicates very clearly there that they had planned to banish him to to outside Rustenburg uh, around the uh, in Pilanes back, um, mm. and and they speak about you know like the, the accommodation that they had found where he was supposed to stay, um, okay. you know, um, and, and the police station and the, that that he was supposed to to report to on, on, on a daily basis. Obviously he did not get that as he slipped into um, exile, you know, um, beforehand. Um, but otherwise, you know, the, the, the rest of, of, of the book uh, towards the end is, is basically general reflections in terms of, you know, uh, what I would have thought, you know, his legacy uh, represented and, and, and meant, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Uh, so it was quite an extensive network. Um, well, a, a police, uh, security police dragnet around him because uh, what what we, we gathered um, lately or some comrades who were close to, 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 uh, to him then informed that the the, the Tswana Territorial Authority at that time in Bufuta Tswana was actually actively involved in also what ad, administering his his burning order and um, we are told one one comrade who knew him actually caught a glimpse of that and then they relayed the message. I don't know how far true it is, you know. Obviously, they are he, lot, yeah, there's he, lots he, of fact, information yeah. around this. Yeah. I did speak to Ntate and, and and which is what I say I, I found quite useful in that, you know, it's kind of like corroborated what, what he had told me. Yeah. You know, I, I in, in in the book, I did use quite a bit of stuff that I, I, I got from him. It's just that he was one of those that I spoke to towards the end. So I did not exhaust the material that, that you know, he, he, had, he, had, he had given, given me from, from okay. the interview. interview. But uh, uh, basically what then what this does is that it actually corroborates his version of events. That would have been the document that I suppose you would have seen because it also indicates clearly that they were uh, in, interacting with Tuana ter Territorial Authority. In fact, Tuana Territorial Authority would have been the entity that identified a place to oh, which right. you know, they were going to, to banish him. So yeah. You know, mm. I, 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 you know, it was quite interesting that um, his recollection uh, is actually quite, you know, accurate in that it's actually been corroborated by, you know, official records. Okay, okay. Well, without taking much of your time, because we just pounced on you because we, we had the benefit of your presence in, in this discussion. Um, yeah, we keep reading about Tiro and more information actually comes up. Um, what I want to check with you is whether, you know, you, you explored his, his internationalism in the book because Tiro st strikes us as one of the BC leaders who was always conscious of the international dimensions of our struggle in the way he, we are told he had visited Namibia with uh, one of his, his friends. Um, the name escapes me now, but the people in Namibia actually one uh, one posted the other day and, and 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 commented about the fact that well, when a Namibian friend of Tiro was at turf, Tiro actually went with him all the way to Namibia, and when we commemorate Tiro, they feel that they also commemorated that they also lost one of those who pledged solidarity with their struggle, and. We are also informed that he visited Lesotho um, as uh, president of, of, of SASM or perhaps before that, but uh, it looks like in his capacity as, as president of SASM, he interacted a lot with uh, the old um, um, Botswana, Lesotho and SPLS University students. Um, I don't know if that comes through in your book. And also the fact that he, he established these links with, with the PLO, which was an underground movement. Um, I don't know if you've been able to, 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 to sort of explore that area, but I know that there's a lot um, just around the life of Tiro and you, know, you as one researcher and individual, you cannot cover all the ground, but maybe give us an inkling of what, what, what you know, if you have picked up anything from there. And whilst we are at that, let me also share this information with comrades and participants here and with yourself. There is a young man, I, I think uh, you know him, Mujuta uh, Mutlamme. He also is a historian and did, uh, I think, his honors research on Tiro. Um, so we've, we've invited him to do a memorial lecture on Tiro precisely to share also his, I, I mean, what he uncovered in his research about Tiro to complement what you have done. So on Wednesday, we will uh, launch the Black History Month as, as, as part of our Azapo activities and um, the Tiro Memorial Lecture 
will kick off that program and uh, Mojuta Mutlame has been kind enough to agree to be the main speaker and we've also invited Rekhadiete and Comrade Nosima Shoba to also paint a picture for us about um, Tiro as, as an activist but as a human being because they were very close to him both here and home and when he was growing up as a young man and into exile. So yeah, I don't know if you can maybe comment on uh, his, his internationalism as I say. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I did look in, in, into that. Um, um, okay, I think uh, let's let's bear with him. It looks like the network is a bit unstable from his side. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, I I, I, I explored that. Um, um, and, and, and try to get as much information as, as, as I could with, with regard to that specific incident. And uh, uh, there's actually one of the, the Swapo uh, uh, people who also wrote a book, uh, and he mentions uh, that trip uh, that okay. you know, he, he made to, 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 to Namibia, and even goes on to indicate that uh, from, from that trip, he... Um, they were invited, I think, to the to the Sasso 1973. Uh, he invited them to the Sasso 1973 uh, uh, conference, okay. uh, and you know he was saying part of the, you know the, the discussions that they had, in fact, was that he was particularly interested uh, in, in learning about you know the worker strike that had actually happened mm. uh, in, 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 in in Namibia. Mm. I do speak about um, you know the work that they, they were doing doing under the auspices of, of, of SASIM and that, you know, around the time that, that he, he died, he was seized with the, with the SASIM project and they were setting up a secretariat in, in Haboroni in, in Botswana okay. and he had traveled as, as well, uh, you know, on, on SASIM work to, to um, you know, um, so to, you know, um, and but he used to go to Botswana quite, quite frequently. All right. Okay. Um, I, I had a look at, at 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 his passport, which which we have, you know, available because he used to travel with a with a valid passport, and it shows several trips, some of which, you know, I could not establish what uh, uh, they were about. But yeah, um, the issue of you know trying to set up, you know, the the arm struggle machinery for you know the black consciousness movement. I do speak quite at length, you know, establishing those links say, with the PLO. Yeah. Um, uh, you know that the Mafuna, um, Professor Nguyen, and others were quite in, in, that, in that regard. Mm -hmm. uh, I speak to them about those those issues here. Okay, okay. Um, Ali, thank you very much. Uh, I think you. I mean, from from your narration, clearly, we should expect a, a sequel from you. You know, uh, from the the records that were declassified. And I, I didn't quite get what you said, whether the Botswana authorities subsequently released the file, but uh, you might no, not. No, no, no. They, they, they've, not, they've not cooperated. The only people who have, have subsequently released uh, uh, the files are the South African authorities, yeah. Okay, okay. Have you approached the CIA to check if they were involved because they always have a hand in, in, in all of these assassinations in Africa. But that's a topic for another day. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank, I, thank. I, I haven't, but in the book, there's, there's quite some material that I use that actually is from the, the US government because in the... Uh, um, what what the WikiLeaks thing? Uh, there, there was some diplomatic cables that they declassified, and uh, it shows the communication that uh, you know, say uh, your embassies in South Africa and and, and in Botswana would have been uh, transmitting through around uh, that that time. Oh, I see. I see. Okay, no, quite interesting and, and, and insightful. And I think uh, for comrades, there are many comrades here who know Diro personally. So we hope that they will also, in their memoirs and reflections, also bring um, their side of, of, of the man. I think Comrade Khadiete tells some very interesting stories about his time with him at Barulong and how he walked him the last uh, 400 meters or so from Teflop after he was expelled up to the, is it the train station or the bus station. So those, those uh, human interest stories are quite useful. And I think uh, we should expect more people to, to write and hopefully in future have a biopic on, in, in his 
on his on his life. Th thank you very much. I think at this point, perhaps we should. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thanks, Comrade uh, Khale. We shouldn't use up much time. Uh, it doesn't look like we will get the live feed that we were hoping to get from the Rinukana side. Uh, maybe we should uh, ask the president at this moment to to join in and 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 do the the honors of. Uh, um, honoring and uh, remembering Tiro and, and, and asking us to rededicate uh, ourselves to, to his ideas, his work, and the, the ideals that he sacrificed his life for. Comrade President, are you okay? Uh, good day, Comrade Kapadisa. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, let me also uh, pass my regards and greet the comrades who have uh, uh, joined in the Zoom. Uh, and also to just pass my regards to the family uh, of Nkhoputsi Tiro, uh, particularly Mamwani Tiro, uh, who basically is based in the Nugana. And every time we want to pass there, do something there about the road, his house is uh, open for us uh, to eat, to sleep, and to do whatever it is we want to do. Uh, she's not well. Now, as we are talking to you, uh, she's in some way in uh, Soweto, uh, being treated or taken to the doctors. We went to see her last week, and uh, she was struggling, but uh, in a jovial mood. And also acknowledge and uh, salute comrade Haungalelu, uh, is it? Uh, for the efforts of uh, bringing to the fore the history of uh, Abraham Tiro, the research uh, which he has done uh, to extend which he has gone uh, to make sure that uh, at least that aspect of our struggle and revolution does not go unnoticed or it's not uh, pushed under the table. Um, when he mentions the other aspect, the question you asked him about uh, Tiro's efforts to reach out uh, to the others, uh, the little bit that I know, because uh, one has spent about 12 years in Botswana in exile, uh, together with uh, the leadership of the then Black Consciousness Movement of Azania, uh, Comrade Musibudi Mangena, Comrade Koko, Bokwe Mafuna, Ujebe Masukwani, Khadiete. Are you there, President? Yes, my child. Okay. Am I not audible? No, no, I think you, you had gone mute for a few seconds, but go on. No, I'm not, I'm not, I, I don't touch, I didn't touch, I'm not muted at all, right. all. I didn't touch. Okay, yes. it could be the net. Technology is failing us, but am I audible? You are very audible, yes. Thank you very much. So what I was saying is that... Uh, we are uh, we're, we're staying not far from where he died and where he was buried. And uh, we're able to pick up the history around to some of his friends um, in, in Botswana, like uh, Mohapi. A lot of people would have known Mohapi, mm. uh, who was a teacher in Botswana. Um, we managed or also spoke to people like uh, Ulimide Khabaruni. Uh, he's still out there in Kogwe. At some stage, he was an MP in the Botswana government. Ulibile Khabroni was part and parcel of that contingent of SARS 
uh, when the, 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 he was mobilizing uh, students around the neighboring universities of uh, Lesotho, of Swaziland, and of course, Kobutwana. But he also reached out to some of the young then students who were struggling in Zimbabwe uh, and they had interaction. If you speak to Professor or Dr. Ibo Mandaza, mm. he does testify to the fact that they had some kind of interaction with Onkoputitil. And that was a buildup, an underground type of buildup to what's getting support from universities, especially in the continent, starting with Southern Africa and reaching out to uh, uh, universities further away from where we are to say there's a struggle going on here and uh, we need your support. And uh, these names that I've mentioned are able to testify uh, to that effect. The other point you mentioned, just to cover it, and uh, post a question to Khaungai uh, Lelitiro about what efforts were made to try to get those who are responsible for his death. And uh, when we continue to have been in the uh, leadership, of the of Azapo. Uh, people like Comrade Mangena, Comrade Koko, and the leadership then, uh, about uh, 10, 15 years ago, maybe 10, uh, efforts were made to reach out to the authorities. Because someone had actually come out to say, I have evidence, I have information. I know who were responsible for the death of Tiro to some extent. And uh, we reached out to the security police of the government, our government you now, and uh, posted the information to them. We have got the names of the people we approached and the people who who were assigned to the assignment. We have the names. Mm. And uh, it looks like it goes and goes and uh, just fizzles in the air, just like a mist. But we also have been, were given names of people who from time to time you also come across. Uh, they, they, they talk to you, they laugh with you but their names keep on coming. And uh, you can see, as soon as you mentioned this aspect of the hostility, and uh, these things are not follow up. We hope at some point, one day there'll be a closure on the matter deal. But let me come back to saying, ever since 1974, Tiro died or was killed. The Black Consciousness Movement and Azapo have never failed to commemorate this revolutionary. Year in, year out, come this day, the members of Azapo in particular, members of the Black Consciousness, will be wanting to gather around his grave. Those who are far fling, wherever they are, they'll come around to commemorate Abraham Tiro. We did that even when we were out in exile in Botswana, in Lesotho, later on in Zimbabwe, other comrades who were in the US, UK, and all over the world, they would remember this revolutionary, this tell what, 
made so much sacrifice for the revolution of our country. At some point, they've tried to raise this with the guys who are sitting in government to say, are we forgetting Tiro? You know, the current president of the country, when he was at Def Group, or when he joined Def Group, Tiro had been there, he knows about Tiro, he knows about the activities. And uh, it's mind boggling why the government is unmoved when it comes to struggle icons, martyrs and heroes who are not of the ruling party. Why should they be so cold to people who have fought and died for this country? So it is a matter that we must keep on. Hello? Yeah, no, go on, President. I think it's our comrades from, uh, you know, Ghana. Um, they've just come through, but go on. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you very much. Let me also maybe uh, bring them in and greet them uh, for standing up when you ask them to to go to the lay a wreath at the graveyard. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we, we, we do that uh, personally and a number of times uh, in my various positions and as president, I've just been there to lay a wreath at the, 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 the graveyard mm. uh, with the uh, is, is, is sleeping. So it is something that we need to continue to do. We need keeping uh, uh, on keeping, knocking the doors. Uh, but if they don't open those doors, I think it's important that this history uh, must be shared. It is important that this history, young people should know about it. Not only that he died, but why he died the sacrifices that he made for the sake of our struggle. And from what uh, Haungalele have said, and uh, from those of us who have been part of this path of getting our country free of black consciousness, it's important that what we know should be shared out there, especially with young people. To mention that in 1972, Tiro was very instrumental in the activities of Terfuo. Then it, when it was very, very difficult and people were afraid to stand up, he was not one of those who, were, who could be afraid by giving the speech that he laid again. And subsequently being expelled and uh, a lot of halabalu was raised around him and the other universities and finally getting a teaching post at Morris Isaacson. He was lucky in the sense that when he could not get a job anywhere, the principal of Morris Isaacson, Matabata, and some of the members of the school board like Ray Nkwe, were able to give him a teaching post to teach history at that high school. Now that was after I left Maurice Isaacson. I was a student at Maurice Isaacson earlier on in 1968, 69, 70, and a little bit in 71. And some of the players of June 16, I know them in person. I know T.A.T. Machinini at the time when he was moving around with the name Don, 
machining. And because the young fellow felt he could become a small Indian American who used to slang at the university. And uh, you know, when young people at the time are assertive, we say, well, power. But he was that type of a vibrant young man. He's done machining. And uh, the brother, Mukiti, who was rocks machining, but also interacted with the uh, university, I mean, high schools like Bona Lady, Orlando High, Musi High, Orlando West, Kanontuane, just around Soweto and the other tertiary education. People like Seth Mazibubo, who is Sandile Mazibubo at the time, and uh, went with those names that were given to us by our parents. But how did you get to Maurice Isaacson and transform those young boys like uh, T.A.T. Machine? Transforms young boys like Comrade Iso Mukhet when he was their history teacher. And when they relate to you how Tiro was so good in teaching history, but at the same time, immediately thereafter, changing the subject to say, the history that I gave you, or that I, is in the books, is the history that makes you to pass your matric. But it is not the history that liberates you. Over and above that, let me give you the history that liberates you. And then he goes on to preach to young people about their oppression, to preach to young people about how those who have oppressed us mentally have made us into small boys. They call our fathers whom we fear and respect as boys and our mothers as girls who work for them, who wake up every day to go and work for these people. But not only to know the history and end up there, but to say there is something that you can do as young people to liberate yourself from these people and ends up with what because terms you can never be spectators in the game you are expected to be playing and that was preached to university students across the country but in the era of tiro after 1972 when a resolution was taken at Tefluop that you have been expelled to go home, but we are not going home. We are going to our young brothers and sisters in the high schools to explain to them what this course is all about, what this struggle at universities is all about, why we were expelled, why the speech and those students, when they left their floor, indeed they did not go to their various homes. A lot of them went into high schools around. Comrade Hotzo Mukhele speaks of Comrade Menzi, Menzi Wambeu, in the Free State, who came to their high school and explained and conscientized them and preached liberation to them. And that changed his attitude and the way of life. How these young people who are Donald Machinini and Iso Mukheti become Tseto Mukheti, become Sieti Machinini, instead of being Sydney Khoto Sidney Siatulo, he becomes Khoto Siatulo. Instead of becoming Seth, he becomes 
Sandy Lemas book. I don't know what has happened. But a lot of us, including the president, who then was Cyril, and now changed to become Matamela. And now, of course, I don't know what has happened to go back to Cyril. But all I'm trying to explain and show, it's the impact that was made by Amram Tiro in the high schools and mobilizing students at Morris, students at Orlando High, students at, uh, at, uh, at Skanontwana. And of course, students in other provinces, because Wokhediete will tell you how they were impacted by this philosophy, by this revolution by this ideology, by this consciousness. How, when we met with Bokabelo Bukala in Botswana, who came from Kimberley, how was then in Tuasa linked this expulsion of the university at the North? What was made was or that made what made the students to be even more coming forward? It's his death, the manner of death that Steve's talk about. The manner of death that speaks that 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 Steve Ban Dubuiko speaks talks about. That this teacher who was exemplary, this teacher who was teaching us about liberation, this teacher who told us that there will be casualties in the struggle has actually become such a casualty in 1974, on the 1st of February, when Tiro was killed with a parcel bomb things could never be the same in our country. And of course it combines with what we talk about as the Sasso Frili Morali. Those students, those Sasso members, those Sasso activists who were arrested for their activities in Carisfontaine in Deben for celebrating the Free Limo struggle or the struggle in Mozambique known as the Viva Free Limo Rally. The former president of uh, Mozambique, when he came to address yeah, yeah. students recently in uh, UNISA, he spoke about the support that they were getting, or they had the support of the Viva Fidimo Rally. They were under the impression that it came from the other organization. And we explained to say, no, no, it was actually the consciousness movement that was behind that. How the death of Tiro, how the, the, the Viva Fidimo Rally activists, how the Sasso BPC 9, how the Pufulsa students in the Eastern Cape, how the arrest of young people, how the trial of Nkutseu Musawu was actually conscientizing young people. Some of us were conscientized by those activities. No wonder 1976 happened in the manner in which it happened. A lot of other people who want to shy away from it says it was sporadic. It wasn't sporadic, it was planned. It was anticipated. Something was brewing. Tiro had laid the foundation. Remember Tiro dies after they had killed him in 1972. So it became very clear who to be a fee. You're not going to be in this thing and come out scot-free. There has to be sacrifice that is made by those who want to raise their hand and say, I'm there. 
Of course, also the death of Mapetla Mohapi in detention. So 1976, the foundation for it, the preparation for it, is these trials, it's these deaths, it's these incarcerations, it's this harassment by young people. 1976 comes after the strikes at Terfluop at Fort Hay at Ungoye and other universities. It doesn't come in the absence of anything in the, in the, in the vacuum. It comes as things were boiling. And the leadership of 1976, like can be linked directly with Tiro. These are the students who Tiro was teaching at Morris, but who also organized other students under the banner of South African student movements called SASM, that when they called these students, Dilo was going to talk to them. So he did not just talk directly to a from one or from five A or B at Boris Isaacson. He speaks to the students across high schools. They come with SASM and he addresses them. They come with SASM from different other areas of the country when SASM organizes them and they speak these things underground and 76 happens. So it is not something that deals with Africans that is sporadic. Those students were not just talking Africans. Africans just became a fuse that is lit but it is revolution, it is the freedom of the country. It could have been any other issue that was boiling at the time. And Africans happens to be that boiling issue. And I know because I was a teacher at uh, Musi High in 1974, and uh, they were dealing with boy inspector De Beer, who wanted to force students to study in Africans. And my students at Musi High, but were in Lufafa, said not in our lifetime. And all can be taken back to Abraham Tiro, his teachings, his revolutionary participation, and also his commemoration service at Regina Mundi. Regina Mundi is now known to many other people as a church that hosted struggle, activities, commemoration service. But the first event of commemorating at Regina Mundi was the commemoration of Abraham Tiro in 1974. And a lot of Sasso members across the country who could not find their way to Botswana because they were refused with passports and it was very difficult. Only Comrade Koko was assigned to go there and represent the organization. We went to Regina Mundi and uh, some of us resolved when we were Regina Mundi that uh, if this is a cause worth dying for, and there are other people or worth sacrificing and there are other people who died for it. Who are we? Why don't you join? And that's how we became very close to Sasso. And when he went to university in 1975 at Delft we could understand and joined the, the, the student organization. So I'm, I'm bringing all these facts to say Tiro was not just another leader in the Black Consciousness Movement. Tiro was not just another organizer of SASO. Because a lot of the students became the organizers of SASO for as long as they were at university. 
As soon as they left university, they just forgot. Others became members when it was convenient for them. But as soon as they went left, it was out. But for Tiro, he went further than that. He took it upon himself. He was not just a student, like many others want to stay, make us believe that no, he was just a student at Teflo and making Totsawa school. Hero was a revolutionary. Whether he was at university, whether he was a teacher, whether he was in Botswana, he continued pushing the bounds of our struggle and revolution. We see him standing up at Teflo taking the cudgels and addressing. We see him coming back to the, to the high school, becoming a teacher. There are many teachers. Some were in Sasso, some were not in the organization, but there were many teachers somewhere under, but they were afraid. But Tiro stood up. And he understood that it is young people you must reach out to. It is those 16 year olds it is those 17 year olds. It is those 18 year olds. Because in another five years, there'll be adults at 21, at 22. It won't take long. So that's where you start. You start them when they are 14 years, when they are 15 years, and you preach these things too. So Tiro did that at Maurice Isaacson. And when he left Maurice Isaacson under the circumstances that were explained by Ha Ongalelu here, he then went to Botswana. And a lot of us went to Botswana, but there are other people who, when they left to Botswana, they waited for somebody to come and lead them. Hero did not wait for anybody to lead them. He made strides and he started pushing the power in Botswana, in Southern Africa, when he became South Africa, Southern African student movement and mobilized the other universities and worked with revolutionaries from Zimbabwe, from Botswana, from Lesotho, from Swaziland, and further afield. And worked with some of the comrades, like it has been mentioned, Boko Mafuna, Nogwekulu, and the, uh, others in Botswana, but then reached out also to know that in this struggle, we also need to mobilize and organize ourselves with the weapons of war. Earlier on, I mentioned his aunt, Mangwan. We call him Mangwan. We call her Mangwan. How he also involved his family and risked the family and the kind of risks they took. He brought in Mangwani into this thing, he brought in his family into this thing and spoke to the family to say, people are going to pass here, please help them. People are going to come to my home when they want to leave the country to go into exile. Please help those people. I don't know how he spoke to Mangwani, but Mangwani did that. When you mention Boko Mafuda, Mawani knows who's Boko Mafuda. When you say Nongwe Herin Nongwe Kulu, Mawani knows who's Herin Nongwe Kulu. When you say Charles Mtombeni, he's late, may his uh, soul rest in peace. Mawani knows who's Charles Mtombeni. Mawani assisted a lot of comrades to cross the borders from South Africa into Botswana and back when they were cutting back. Comrade yeah. Charles speaks about when they were in Botswana, they had to come back into the country for their underground activities. And they went, the contact person was Mangwan. And Mangwani led, took them to another contact person. And she, in that area, were able to mobilize some of the people in the area to say these people, are involved in the struggle. And Tiro said, we must help. And this is what we are doing. So you can imagine with this kind of work, what happens when such a person is killed in the manner in which he is. 
he died. It means he was no ordinary person and the system got to know that he was involved in these activities. This is my decision and conclusion. And they thought we must stop him right on his tracks and they sent a castle bomb and it killed him. The Azanian People's Organization, Azapi, working with the family of Tiri in 1997, went to Botswana to go and dig up his remains, for those remains to be reburied in the country. Now, this is an organization that is not running the state. This is an organization that does not have the resources. But Azapo put things together and lived up to the wishes of Mulisane, the mother of Tiro, who says, if only she can, he can come and be buried here where I am, so that when my time comes, to leave this world, we should be buried side by side with my son. So in 1997, the leadership of Azapo went to Botswana, exhumed Tiro's remains, and reburied in the country. And I happen to know that there were people who were saying to the leadership of the ruling party in the province then to say, why can't we do something for Tiro? And they said, look, it is history. Forget about that man. We are now in another chapter. And they washed their heads and they left everything to the struggling family. So if there is anything to take as the black consciousness movement, as Azabu, it's that which was able to Remember, Batubabona. When we were addressed by a former principal of Mturiga Shes and Zitulele uh, Kindi, Taunyani, at the laying of the stone from Mturiga he said to that gathering, that you as a people, you are amazing. You don't forget your people. Even if it takes you how many years, you don't forget your people. When we were uh, commemorating and laying and, and, and veiling a tombstone from Tuliga Shezi, and we did it for Tiro, a bit more happy, many others, and uh, not so long ago, he also went to Botswana to go and exhume Iso Mukheti and brought them to be buried inside the country. So that, 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 that is uh, what one should remember about Tiro. But we are also not making a breakthrough in this village, home village. And I, I don't know why. We're not just making a breakthrough. When you go to Dinugana, people talk about Tiro in hush hush tones. He's one of their own. They would rather go and get a statue of another person and put it there rather than to celebrate, to commemorate, and to recognize one of their own. I think it is something that we must continue to do it to get young people in Dinukan especially, but all over the country to say, Liluna, Lena Limuhanka, Bahanka, Habatu Fela from the other provinces or, uh, or, uh, or uh, ethnic groups. Liluna, Lili Kobutswana, Lili Batswana, Lili Modinukana, Lena Libahanka. So recognize about Entiro, it's one of those. He has sacrificed his life. 
for the country when he was at university, his education. And he did not only look at doing it for what we Uganda put for the country at large. So this is very important. And this is a message that we must continue to take to the Uganda, to the young people in Uganda, but to young people at universities and other places to say, this is the man. Now, I have spoken about Tiro then, when we were oppressed at the University of the North. I have spoken and other people have written and spoken about Tiro when he was at Maurice Isaacson in 1970. Three, when the Boers were trying to force Africans into the heads of young people, and Tiro said, not in my lifetime, and got young people to work around that project and destroy it. That's why 76 comes out. We see Tiro now in Botswana in exile, where he says, now I'm placed here. This is the role that I should be playing. Now, those who are seven day Adventists, they also talk about Tiro as a man of conscience, a man of God, a man in the church who used to take a pulpit, a, a platform, and preach in the church. And, 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 not, not, not Barutiba or not, and preach the right message of Christianity. He is that type of a person. Now, when we place him there and we see what type of character he is, and then move him to present day South Africa, 1994 upwards or onwards, I've got no doubt that uh, some of the things that are happening now, the road have been very sharp to oppose some of these things that are happening. The sham liberation and democracy that we have, that is sold to us to say now we are free, but we only see this freedom on television and hear about it on the, in the radios. But we don't see it where we live. It cannot be. If freedom has to be freedom, it must be freedom in our villages where we live. It must be freedom in our homes where we are. When there are no jobs, when the quality of education is so inferior, when people are starving where they live, when people have got no place to sleep, where place no, no place to stay, when the quality of their abode is of low, such low standard. It is my view that Tiro would not have tolerated the status quo. I think in the same way as he was able to mobilize, he would have, he would have assisted the organization and those who believe in the cause of justice and liberation to mobilize them towards making sure that things become better. When the leadership that we have are just leadership for themselves. I mean, that famous uh, utterance of some minister saying, all of us have got something in the cupboards, skeletons in the cupboards. Of course, we say, speak for yourself and your people. You are the ones who are doing these things. You are the ones who've got these skeletons. So speak for yourself and uh, confess. Even when you thought now this one is an eminent NEC, even when you said now this one at least an upright NEC, and you discover that no, no, no. Just to clean the schools, 431 million. Just to sanitize the schools, which are closed anyway, because there was no student going to school. So you, 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 what, what, what more effort were you doing? 
Now, just for that, you think, no, this one is better than the other one, then it comes out. No, no, in fact, 431 uh, million has actually been fought for this. When you thought, no, I've got a nice premier who's able to discipline the other, his MECs. And then it comes out to say, no, no, this premier was actually telling the people, give these ones a job or take this uh, tender to this one, appoint this, is involved. And you, are, you want to know, Hunter, who is not involved in this? And Tiro would have stood there to say, no, it can't be. When there is so much corruption in the country, everybody who goes to become or appointed to do a job, they, they just amass for the, the wealth for themselves in a corrupt fashion. I think Tiro would have stood up to challenge. And I think these are the lessons when we remember him that uh, we, we, we should do that. And of course, we must not forget that uh, as long as we continue to be uh, disorganized in the way we are, people are also going to be doing things in our name. And they will take whatever it comes and put it in their pocket and forget about the cause of struggle and forget about helping our ordinary masses and our ordinary people. So comrades, um, with those remarks, I want to invite you once more next year I don't know in whatever fashion because we used to go there physically. This year we couldn't go there physically to go and uh, commemorate a uh, team of Patriot. But those comrades of us who are in the Nogana, and we salute them for taking it on our behalf. And we say, let this day be remembered. And we want to say to the family of Tiro. Let us continue to work together and not forget the Star Wars. There is a Pat Lahwana who is a direct cousin of Tiro, who grew up with Tiro, who always says, we've been asking this uh, government to name the road that passes next to Tiro's house from the Botswana border of Lobazi to Zilas, on Hopoti Tiro Freeway. And they're dilly dallying, they would rather wait for another corrupt leader so that they can name that road after a corrupt leader. Rekha Padisa, thank you very much for affording me the opportunity to share my little bit on Tiro and to thank the other comrades who are here. And sometimes you don't see, you think you are talking alone, but uh, thank you very much, my time goes. Uh, one nation. One Azania. One nation, Comrade Kapadis. Thank you, thank you. Uh, comrade President Arahole Boche, uh, I think this is probably one of the most uh, exhilarating talks I've heard you give in a very long time, full of passion, but uh, quite appropriate, lifting important episodes and moments in the life of this martyr, this leader of ours, but also linking political activities uh, political highlights during the course of struggle to his direct influence and participation. Speaking for myself, now that you've lifted um, a story about uh, how he was commemorated, when he died, some of us were hardly 10. I, I don't know what year it was, but there, there was a... A center spread in, I, I think it was Pace magazine. Um, back in the days, probably in 1975, 76. 
uh, with the headline, there is no struggle without casualties. We didn't know who Tiro was. We didn't know, um, you know, what, what was happening around him, but it was probably that Pace magazine when we were out there in the hinterland of Kimberley that exposed us to this iconic leader because just reading it as a young person then uh, when I was probably around nine or 10 years uh, impressed on me that we are living in a country that is very brutal, a country where a person's life counts for nothing. Because when you read there that he was a student at Teflop, what he did, and then they pursued him all the way into exile. Uh, it touched my young mind, and I think it touched the minds of many other young people. And so it was that as we were growing up uh, in our deeper recesses, we wanted to make a contribution in the liberation of our people like Tiro did. Um, and to us who were student activists, we always looked up to him as, as an icon, as a martyr. And in whatever we did uh, in student activism, we wanted to parallel it along the lives of Tiro. And I hope that um, many of our young people, even our children, get to read uh, about the life of Tiro and also aspire to, to emulate him and uh, to do good for our country. Uh, probably second to Steve Biko. Um, Tiro is probably one of the most quotable leaders, uh, not just in the Black Consciousness Movement, but in the liberation struggle in Africa, if, if, if not the, the, the whole world. Uh, he didn't write much. He only wrote that speech in, uh, during 1972 at the graduation ceremony. But so many writers have explored that speech and have broken it down, they have distilled it. And every line of that speech, every time you, write, you, you read it, you discover something new. So I just want to take this moment to uh, lift one or two excerpts from um, what Haung Aleli calls the, the seminal speech. And indeed it is, it is seminal. Um, here is this one here. In the light of what has been said above, the challenge to every black, black graduate in this country lies in the fact that the guilt of all wrongful actions in South Africa, restriction without trial, repugnant legislation, expulsions from schools, rest in rest on all those who do not actively dissociate themselves from and work for the eradication of the system breeding such evils. How appropriate, how timely, how reflective of our condition now. And that's why some of us say that that speech is so timeless. Every other except that you lift out of it speaks to our condition now. We are facing a system that breeds evil, even as we live currently in South Africa. Something that Tiro remarked about almost 50 years ago. That system might not be uh, what breeding repugnant legislation anymore, but the system of evil that we are confronted with is the one that gives us poverty on a large scale, one that gives us unemployment on a large scale, one where millions and millions of our people are sinking deeper and deeper into the mire of poverty, squalor, and hopelessness. One would have thought that when Tiro wrote, he was projecting into 2021, but this is the situation that they were resisting, hopeful that if they were to change that system, things will uh, become better and black people's life will be lifted. But alas, hope is receding every day. And he is not 
you know, he, he also talks about the agency to stop this descent into deeper squalor and poverty. He says, it is us black graduates in particular who must, who must take responsibility for that because we have gone to school, we can analyze, we can research, but we seem to be helpless to change the fate of our people. So Tiro speaks to you and I who are tuned in here today because we are the graduates. We are the ones who have studied further. Yet the situation is sliding, sliding further into oblivion. So we have a responsibility, comrades, those of us who have tuned in here to dissociate ourselves from this system and to work for the eradication of the system that is breeding Evil. So in our own walks of life, whether you are a political activist, whether you are a teacher, whether you are a scientist, let us have that conscience which Comrade Strike Tokwane says the seven Adventist uh, remark about Tiro, that he was a leader of conscience. Let us ask ourselves the question, what is it that I can do in my little corner to make the lives of fellow South Africans better. I'm not built to speak here, but I just was just lifting that quote. Um, there are many other quotes that we can lift from Tiro. Uh, he remarks that we do not have a system of education common to, South, to, to all South Africans. This was in 1972. And 50 years later, we still do not have a system of education common to all South Africans. The system of education is um, distinguishable through the way in which it affords class privileges, racial privileges, um, perhaps also geographic, perhaps also demographic privileges uh, to certain categories of people. Whereas when Tiro challenged our system of education, he was saying, let's fight for a system of education that is common to all South Africans. Why can't we have that in early childhood education? Why can't we have that um, in national education? Why can't we have that in, in higher education? But that is the challenge that Tiro throws up. He speaks to us from his grave and he forces us today to reflect on the work that we must still do as a Zappo, as the liberation movement, as black people, and the citizens of this country. Uh, thank you very much, Comrade Strike, for having given us um, that very inspiring and evocative speech covering the life of Tiro. Comrades, I want to at this point, because we have some time, we had planned to finish the program at about one o'clock. I don't know if uh, those who have tuned in, I know uh, there are Tiro's contemporaries here, but Comrade uh, Secretary General Zitulele Kindi, Comrade Mpuzeng, Comrade Mangena. Um, I'm going to just take liberties and say, let me give uh, perhaps one or two comrades who want to share reflections about the life of Tiro um, and who perhaps want to reorientate us to his ideals to also have some brief comments and then we will proceed to close. Com the comrades from Dinokana, I don't think they will manage to, to come through today. Um, so let's just make peace with that. Is there anyone comrades who would like to, to comment, to make a remark, um, have some reactions to, to perhaps the speech by the president or have your own comments and reflections? Uh, if you can lift your hand or if you can just unmute yourself and say something, that, that will be okay. Uh, will you manage to un unmute yourselves? And proceed to comment. We are almost at the tail end of our... Unfortunately, after Redua in that consultative meeting, the country went into lockdown. I think it was a month later. So we were told that political gatherings are banned. 
movement of the people nationally was restricted. We could not meet. We could only speak telephonically and through WhatsApp. And uh, that was a spanner in a wheel. Is you going to say Ebolaya? Eretwala in the six months that we were given. Was it six is, months or three months? Is that six is, months? Hello, comrades. Six it, months every day. Oh, okay. We did not do anything. Comrades, can you hear me there, comrade uh, Madalani? Uh, when we came to level one, comrade, people most were left the month. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Last six months, sorry to our participants. I just want to make sure that the comrade is talking to us or whether he's talking to a different group out there. Comrade Mtutuzelu, can you hear me? Comrade, political commissar, I can hear you very well. Oh, all right. No, I just wanted to, 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 to bring you in properly. Um, all right. We, we have comrades here on Zoom. We, we wanted to bring you in from the Nokana. I see you. You are not on video. Uh, can you go on video, or you you are struggling with the video there? No, no, we not get the graveyard. Comrade Kepadisa, we left the graveyard immediately after twelve o'clock. We are now. We have converged in town. Go oh, comrade now. We are all right. continuing our meeting. Oh, all right. Now, okay. That's what I wanted to make clear because I I I I got a sense that you are not speaking to those audience. But you are the chairman here yeah, Northwest. Can, can we give you a moment just to share with us what you did there today and uh, maybe just give a, a message of, of, of support to the audience here because they had expected that the, the Northwest Comrade, we will be able to transmit from, from Dinokan. So Comrade, let me just give you- Can you fix yourself into frequency modulation? I cannot hear you. Pick Katusa uh, voice. Hey, Oangudla Tower. You must get closer yeah, to you are better now. You must get closer to your phone. Yeah, and get go for five minutes just to address the audience here and 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 give a message of solidarity and support. Unfortunately, we couldn't link up with you at that time. All right. We were able we we are able to to meet at the grave site. Okay. And uh we followed the program that you gave us to do. All right, Tama. Unfortunately, we had no uh, a, a, a member from the Tiro family. All right. But we opened with a prayer. And uh, as the chairperson, I gave a brief background of who Unkopote Tiro is. All right. What transpired. I think we spoke, I spoke of, I started speaking of uh, his famous speech in 1972 that led to his expulsion. All right. When he ran for his dear li dearest life and ran to Gauteng, mm -hmm. when he was employed at Maurice, Maurice and Isaacson High School as a teacher in history. Mm -hmm. And uh, subsequently, his departure to Botswana, where he met his un un untimely death through a letter bomb. All right. That is the background I gave. Okay. And we laid the wrath and we departed. Now we have gathered Port Robong. We are continuing with the second part of the day. Okay. We're looking into Azabo Northwest. We are right. trying to okay. resuscitate okay. or rejuvenate Azapo in the Northwest. We are trying to find our footing as a political party in Northwest, as oh, Azapo. Okay, no, no, no. Thank you very much, comrades. We really want to honor you and to express our gratitude to you that despite the challenges to COVID and social distancing and also the weather and many other factors, uh, you managed to pull through the few comrades that you could pull through from, I know comrades traveled from Rustenberg and others from Pochistrum um, to rededicate yourself to the memory and the ideals of comrade Dio. Ralo Lebo Hamai Towers and greet all the comrades who are gathered here. We will speak offline um, at the end of, 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 of this. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Okay. Uh, thank you, Comrade Mtutuzeli, the chairperson of uh, Azapo in Northwest. 
Um, comrades, now I'll give to any one of the participants who would like to, to make a comment, maybe one or two, and then we will uh, close the, the location. Is there anyone that wants to, to make a comment or say something? Okay, if none, uh, comrades, uh, let us then um, express appreciation to all of you, uh, particularly to those who took occasion to, to address us or share their insights and um, perspectives on the life of this matter and freedom fighter. In particular, comrade Khamwele uh, Lutiro, who was actually not built to speak, but who was kind enough to share with the uh, participants, um, you know, uh, some of the, the narratives or the, the ideas in, um, in, in the book that he has written um, uh, about Tiro. Uh, I would urge most of us here to, you know, purchase the book um, so that we know more about this leader of, us, of ours, because if we know more about him, we will feel the obligation to share more of his life and to perhaps be a little bit more like him as well. Um, uh, the president also spoke and he gave a, a very inspiring address about Comrade Tiro. I see the secretary general has raised his hand let me bring him in and then let him uh, address us on, on this occasion. Comrade Zid, uh, please come in. Right. Dumela uh, Dadi. Dumela Good afternoon. Thank you, Dadi. Um, I don't mean to speak. I didn't mean to speak, uh, especially after President Asabu uh, I hope we will talk about Rubele. What I see as well as we will see. Uh, but then um, I'm coming in just to show appreciation and uh, echo what you said. I think uh, I also share your sentiment that is one of the most moving uh, addresses given us. So, there are challenges to speech writing. If you can get a recording and then we'll transcribe that speech and uh, distribute it. That's my request. Rebecca, look into that and then transcribe the speech. Okay. Thank you, comrade. And uh, quite a moving talk from uh, uh, the young Atiro. Uh, and there's still much that needs to be done. Yeah. Um, and, and again, again, to, to agree with you, uh, how do I put it, put it more politely and neatly? He's the most misappropriated uh, speaker and writer in the sense that a lot of his quotations are ascribed to certain people when they were made by him. I'm mm. just uh, uh, doing that. But one that moved me that always stays in our hearts, in my mind, is the one that says there is no struggle without casualties. Yeah. It was prophetic and he became one of the first casualties to die in such a brutal manner. Mm. Uh, um, all well, that ends well. Amanda Glondau. Okay, no, thank, you, thank, th thank you very much, Comrade Secretary General. Uh, comrades, this brings us to the end of the program. And as I had mentioned earlier, we also want to, Azapo will be commemorating Black History Month uh, for the month of February. As we know, they've been doing that in the US for almost 30, 40 years. Uh, so we, we will also um, commemorate Black History Month and um, part of the program is not just to commemorate history as history but we will also deal with different thematic areas the history of black science the history of um, economics uh, history in its various manifestations we will invite um, speakers we will invite 
people who are knowledge, knowledgeable in the field so that we can, we can share this information that it was not only the Albert Einsteins of this world or the Charles Darwins of this world who contributed to science. There were also other black scientists who invented, who discovered things. It's just that as we know, the world of epistemology uh, also gives us what it wants to give us and suppresses what it deems inappropriate. And uh, part of um, having these um, commemorations is also to bring in alternative information so that um, our children and young academics, young writers and, res and, 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 and researchers can be pointed in the right direction, particularly um, on, on black history and African history. So uh, uh, at this point, Akili Leboche, Kenekire Hela Pula, Wana Zania, One Nation. Raleboch. I really like Arunaga or Fell, I sing Barulung Hela. Yeah, I get a hat, 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 I get a hat